Hi, welcome back to the channel. Well, it's Saturday. This is a personal vehicle, 1987 XJS, and it's very relative to what I want to talk about for aircraft. How do we remove the fuel lines without damaging the fittings? So stay tuned and I'll show you. Now this is a V12 engine, so it has 12 injectors. It has 12 uh, short lines. And then also it has a return fuel line and a feed fuel line. So very similar to your aircraft, uh, like a 912. Uh, and this also applies on the two strokes as well. There's always a source of ignition somewhere. The fuel is going to drip on the exhaust. On this particular car, the exhaust is way out to the under here on the side. And in the center is all the ignition system. So there's always a good source. So just like our airplanes, we don't want fuel leaks, we don't want fires. So follow along and I'll show you this cool method that I saw that I really want to pass along to you. So I'm just using, as you can see, just a generic little soldering iron. Um, probably not very expensive, I don't think. So let's get to it and see what we can do. Let me get zoomed in some more here. Okay. So I'm just gonna put it on the side of the hose and oh, it's starting to smoke already. So that's working pretty good. Now, if I was gonna do this with a knife, which I always have done with a, I break off a nice sharp blade on an X-Acto knife and I have a reasonable feel for it because I'm only trying to cut it down enough to weaken the structure of the hose so I can get it off. But it's sometimes difficult to do that, and, and I never want to make a scratch in the fitting because if we scratch the fitting, then it may not seal properly. There's always a chance of that. So working on, the, on, on these things, we don't want to do any damage ever. So I'm just running it back and forth, and I'm getting a pretty good channel in there. Now, let's see where we're at. Yeah, there might be a little smell, but that's okay. Um, there's, a, there's always a price to pay for damage-free. <laughs> okay, so let's get a pair of pliers here. I'll give this a little twist, and I would almost bet that it'll come right off. Yeah, look at that. It's weakened it enough that I can take it off. And so that's what I have after. It's, it's melted it down in there pretty good, and I can clean that off. And look at that fitting right there is absolutely in perfect condition. No marks on it whatsoever. That's what we want. So that's what I want on the old Jag, and that's what I want on the aircraft. So uh, I'll be using this uh, um, from now on. I think this is a fabulous way to take these off. Okay, I need you to, can you stabilize it for me, please? Yep, there we go. Okay. Oh, okay, yeah, now it's smoking. See some smoke. Yeah, that's now what we're looking smoking. for is a little smoke. And then maybe come in a little bit closer to, to the ring. Back cap. to the ring, yeah, yeah. Just to get it in the very end. You want to try and get it off again now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Hopefully so then, so you're going to position the pliers yeah. right there. Yeah. Pinch them shut. Yeah, and, give it a and good rotate it. And rotate. Almost. Still not. Mm -hmm. Oh, you can oh, see, it's right at this you end can see it. the fibers, but it's right at the cap end. It's still stuck. Oh, it's going to come off. Yep. There you go. Look at that. Perfect. You did it. Way so how go. many more of these? Yeah. Well, A the, few? There's 12 more left on the car. So, so no, how... there's actually two more left on the rail. So line. how much... So... So what you want is to dig a trench. Don't, it's hot. It, it, you dig a trench, and then you try and disrupt the fiber continuity. Correct. And then you twist it off. Because it's rubber, but with it, but the, what gives it its strength is, is, the, uh, is the fibers. Yeah, the, see, it should, give me, it should be closer to the ring. Yeah, see, this one here I got right All the, the way through, right yeah, 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 yeah. It was yeah, that yeah. last little bit. Yeah, there. yeah. Got it. Okay. Got it's it. an acquired okay. skill. Yep, it is. No, I like it's, it. It's a new skill. That is awesome. So there's uh, only two more to do on here, these two, for the okay. front two cylinders, and then all the 12 of them on the car still. So are we going for lunch, or yes. what are we doing? Yes. Let's okay. have one. So, now we so how does this actually work and work so well? Well, we can see the line here 
which is the braiding that goes all the way around, which actually is molded into the hose, gives it all of its strength. Well, when we've burned this groove in here, we've burned all of that connection away in that one spot. So then we can see when we squeeze it that, you know, I can see a few of the fibers here where we've gone right through that. So by using the, uh, the heat on it and melting it, burning it, We've ruined its structural integrity, of course, and then we can just get it off because then it's just like a soft, unsupported rubber hose. So this is a classic example of what happens. Look at the gouges in this thing. Uh, so somebody's used a knife on this uh, before. Uh, this is a 1987 car, so I imagine it's had the lines changed on it. By the evidence here, at least once, because it's all chopped up, the gouges that are in that, now, if I take and rub my finger over that, that is sharp. I can really feel that. So what's that going to do to the inside of the, the nice surface of the inside of the nice new rubber hose when I put it on? It's going gonna, it's gonna to actually put some little cuts in it, and that's going to make it fail uh, early. Uh, this one here actually is one of the lines that was actually leaking, seeping. So... I can see why now because it had those gouges in it. So I'll um, get a really fine little uh, little jeweler's type file and I'll uh, make a little a little file like this guy and um, repair that and make it nice and smooth to the touch before I put the hose back on. So here it is, post repair. I've used the little uh, fine file and gone over it and took all the uh, sharp edges off it. And this is a piece of 400 sandpaper that of course is in a little strip. And I've also gone back and forth just like this a lot of times to polish it up. And there's still a couple of little teeny marks that you can see in it. Uh, they're not sharp. It's the best that I can do to repair this. Uh, this is pretty much an irreplaceable part. So, uh, I'm sure that it'll turn out just fine because at least now it's smooth so when the hose goes over top it's not going to try and cut the hose. Now I only have, uh, let's see, tw uh, 23 more of these to do because I have to do it on the fuel rail and on the injector but that's fine. I know that when I put this all back together because it's a lot of work, same as when you're working on your aircraft, a lot of maintenance is quite consuming time-wise but we need to do it and we need to do it properly and damage free so if you have a 912 has lots of barbs on here you can use this method and not damage scratch the barbs at all and also it still applies to the two strokes as well they have a, some of these are pretty tough to get off um, the plastic not so much but the rubber definitely difficult to get off so uh, I definitely uh, will be using this method all the time. And as I've been presenting so far, I'm thinking of fuel lines. How about oil lines? Because we know how they're difficult they can be to get off as well. Uh, so you'll be able to take the oil line off the fitting without damaging the fitting. And the last thing we want is an oil leak as well. So this soldering iron method carries on for all the, any lines that go on a barbed fitting. So uh, I'm sure that I'll find more uses to, uh, to apply this to uh, as time goes on. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. I'm glad I could share this with you today. And have a great day. Bye now.